Welcome to U News. I'm Lorraine Cáceres in for Carolina Sarasa. The annual G7 summit is convening in France this weekend. World leaders from Great Britain, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, and the U.S. will tackle global problems ranging from the economy to climate. Andrea Linares has the details. Larry Kudlow, Trump's top economic advisor, said the president is concerned that U.S. allies are manipulating their currencies instead of adopting pro-growth economic policies. Kudlow fires are raging at a record rate in Brazil's Amazon rainforest. A scientist warned it could strike a devastating blow. David Biller, he's a reporter with... And now 2019 is already on track to go down in history as the year with the most fires burning in Brazil, with close to 75,000. Many may be wondering, what can we do to help? So Xiomara gonzalez Govea has some suggestions. And while the Amazon fire burns out of control in California, a now to a massive bust today, the FBI charging 80 people with trying to scam at least $46 million out of their victims by using fake online romance schemes or hacking businesses. Jay Curvelo has the story. Defense lawyers for Mexican actor Pablo Lyle asked the Miami judge to dismiss their client's manslaughter charge after fatally punching a man because according to them, the case is a classic case of the stand your ground law that allows people to use force if they feel their life is in danger. The judge heard the arguments, but his answer was not what Pablo Lyle was hoping for. If there's a change in leadership at Overstock.com, this comes after the CEO made some controversial comments that made the company's stock tumble. Romina Leon explains. Now to new information in the investigation into Jeffrey Epstein's suicide. Federal crisis in Mexico as migrants awaiting court hearings in the U.S. are living in brutal conditions, and it appears there's no help in sight from the Mexican government. Here's Jaime Garcia. To some scary moments aboard a flight from Oklahoma to Honolulu on Thursday, smoke filled the cabin and the pilot had to make an emergency landing. Seven people were sent to the hospital. Grecia Lassa has the story. The man police believe is the Golden State Killer won't go to trial until next year. And terrifying moments for drivers along a highway in Biloxi, Mississippi. A truck rams into a light pole and flips over, and the entire crash was caught on camera. Ana de Mendoza reports. One of two major league baseball players in court in the Dominican Republic accused in connection with an alleged money laundering and drug trafficking scheme. As David Romo tells us, his attorney says he's done nothing wrong. And earlier this week, we told you the story about Reynaldo Arroyo. He's the 23-year-old man who just got his first haircut in 15 years so he could join the Army and comply with hairstyle requirements. Reynaldo joins. And if the album fans can't stop talking about Taylor Swift's lover is trending big right now as reaction comes into an announcement she made about re-recording her old albums. Here's Miriam Arias. So this is Taylor Swift's seventh album and the first to debut on Spotify. Now it's got 18 tracks, which Taylor calls a love letter to love itself. Now the album is also her first with Universal Music Group and Republic Records. She spent more than a decade with the label Big Machine. And let's talk a little bit more about that because she got into a little bit of a heated argument over mm -hmm. social media with her music manager, Scooter Braun, because he bought the rights to her music. What is all that about and what was, you know, the situation, what he said and everything? Yeah, so what happened is that when she was younger and starting out, when she was about 16, she signed away all her music rights. And this is something very common among artists. This happens a lot. She says that now the difference is that she's going to be the co-producer of all the songs in this album, Lover, and in the album itself, she's actually going to be the executive producer. So hopefully we're not going to see that happen again. Really quickly, I want to share what Scooter Braun had to say. He uh, said that regardless of what has been said, be able to do it soon. So There's definitely hits I want to listen to. It. Yeah, something that we heard on that package earlier. <laughs> and Taylor's not the only one among celebrities making political comments. She recently was tweeting or saying something about Trump. What was that about? Yeah, so she's getting political. We saw that in the last election. She didn't get too political. And she actually said in an interview with The Guardian that she regrets that, that this year she wants to 
you know, talk about what's happening a little more. And she also said uh, she's very fervent on the fact that we are a democracy in the U.S. And I have it here that sometimes uh, she thinks that Trump treats this as an autocracy. So Definitely very interesting. Thank you so much. This is all we have for this week, but we hope you join us next week. I'm Noreen Cáceres in for Carolina Sarasa. Have a happy and